Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be going over Raynaud's phenomenon. I've already covered uh, thromboangitis obliterans, and um, in that video, I talked to you about how important it is to know the differences between that, which is Berger's disease, and Raynaud's phenomenon. So please make sure you watch the video on Berger's disease and also this video on Raynaud's and make sure that you guys know the difference. I forgot to put my phone on airplane mode. Let me do that right now so we don't get interrupted. Okay. Also, before we get started, please don't forget to support me and support my channel. How can you do that? By liking this video, subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, not only do I have audio lessons available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com, I am now providing reviews for the next generation NCLEX. I'm going over um, the expectations for you as far as clinical judgment is concerned, priority and delegation, um, what changes on the new generation NCLEX, the new type of questions that you'll be getting and how you're expected to answer them correctly. And I've made it very affordable. So go check out um, my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com and go ahead and book yourself a review or a review for someone that you love. All right, so guys, without any further ado, let's get started. Raynaud's phenomenon. I want you to take a look. Look what it says. It says Raynaud's phenomenon. This is an episodic. Look at that. Vasospastic disorder of the small cutaneous arteries, often involving the fingers and toes. Let's stop right there. When you're studying and you're reading something, you need to read to understand. So what is that sentence really telling us? A couple things, episodic vasospastic. So that lets us know that episodically, those um, vessels are spazzing, okay? Specifically, which one? the arteries, remember arteries, that's what brings the oxygen, vitamins, minerals, nutrients to the tissues, not going back to the heart, to the actual tissues, where usually the fingers and toes. So we're having vasospasms of the arteries that are supposed to bring oxygen, vitamins, minerals, and nutrients to the tissues, especially the fingers and toes. Fingers and toes are getting um, uh, that circulation when the spasms occur, right? Okay, let's keep going. It usually occurs primarily in young women between 15 and 40 years of age. And it's more common in women than in men. Well, this is interesting because um, one of the differences when you look at Berger's disease, we see that this happens more in young men. But with Raynaud, we see it happens more in who? Women. Okay, let's keep going. Um, down here, contributing factors. This is important. So what are contributing factors? What can cause these vasospasms of these tiny arteries in the fingers and toes? Occupation-related conditions, such as using of vib vibrating machinery. Let's stop right there. Vibrating machinery. I don't remember what it's called, guys. Someone tell me in the comment section. But you know that machine that the... Um, construction workers use when they're trying to break cement and it, they hold on to it and it goes like the bulldozer. That's what it's called, bulldozer, right? A bulldozer, that's a vibrationary like uh, machine. So that's what they're talking about. Any machine that causes vibrating, okay? So vibrating machinery or working in cold environments. Well, that makes sense because we know that cold causes what? Vasoconstriction. What is Raynaud's? Vasoconstriction of those arteries of the fingers and toes. So that makes sense. Cold um, environments, exposures to heavy metals such as lead and hyperhomocysteinemia. Um, I'm having a brain fart. I know what that is, but on top of my head, I really can't remember. So if it comes to me, I'll come back. To, I'll come back and tell you. But if I remember by the end of the video, make sure you go look it up. Let's keep going. Diagnosis. It's made on uh, persistent symptoms for at least two years. Let's stop at that sentence. Remember when I taught you about that word persistent? That is very um, important because they could say that diagnosis is based on symptoms for at least two years, but they put that adjective persistent on purpose. What does it mean when something's persistent? That means that no matter what you do, no matter what evidence-based practice has taught us should stop, it still doesn't stop. It keeps going. That's what persistence means, okay? So the diagnosis is made on the persistent symptoms. The patient keeps having these symptoms no matter what they do for two years. Patients with Raynaud's phenomenon should have routine follow-up to monitor for the development of connective tissue or autoimmune disorders. We need to make sure that we rule those out. 
Now we're right here. Look at this. Raynaud's phenomenon. It's characterized. That's key word. It's characterized by what? Vasospasm induced color changes of the fingers, the toes, the ears, nose. And I call Raynaud's disease the patriotic disease. Why? Because red, white, and blue color the flag, being a patriot, right? And that's the colors you see, red, white, and blue. So let's talk about this red, white, and blue. Um, in the book, they call um, they have it white, blue, red, but it doesn't have to be in any specific order. When you have this, um, the vasospasms, at first we'll see that um, the patient, that area will turn white because of the vasospasm, there's not enough blood flow. Then when it gets bad, it turns blue, that cyanotic color, right? And then when it, um, the blood comes back, red. Because remember, the spasms, is it consistent? No, it's episodic. So the patient have a spasms, they'll have a spasm, they'll go back to normal. They have a spasm, then they'll go back to normal. So during the time of the spasm, that's where the blood is decreased. That's when you expect to see the paleness. That's the white, the cyanosis, that's the blue. But as soon as it goes back to normal and the blood rushes back, you'll see the red. Okay, take a look. It says decreased perfusion results in pallor. That's your white. The digits then appear cyanotic. That's your bluish color. These changes are followed by rubber red that caused by the hyperemic response that occurs when blood flow is finally restored. The patient usually describes coldness and numbness in the vasoconstrictive phase. That makes sense. When those vessels are spazzing out, right? That's what they're going to feel. They're going to feel coldness and numbness. They're going to lose feeling in that area because of decreased circulation. And that is followed by throbbing, aching, pain. Now, before I change the um, uh, page, take a look at this finger. Okay. What do you think is causing this bluish color, that bluish discoloration, that cyanosis, decreased blood flow? So anyway, it's followed by throbbing, aching pain. Let's move on to the next page. Tingling and swelling in the hyperemic uh, phase. That the hyperemic phase, guys, that's where the blood flow actually comes back. An episode usually lasts only minutes, but in severe cases, it can persist for hours. Well, that's a problem. Can you imagine no blood flow in an area for hours? Tissue starts to die, right? Tissue starts to be affected and damaged. Exposure to cold, emotional upsets, tobacco use, and caffeine often bring on symptoms. I put a star next to it. You need to know it and Clex expects you to know this. Again, exposure to cold, and that makes sense because that causes vasoconstriction. Emotional upsets, use of tobacco, and caffeine can bring on these symptoms. Primary focus on nursing management for Raynaud's phenomenon is patient teaching. You teaching that patient how to prevent this from happening. I'm right here, guys. I'm putting my mouse here so you can follow. So focus your instructions on preventing recurrent episodes because there's no cure, okay? But you can help to decrease the amount of recurrent episodes that happens. Um... Where was I? The patient is to wear loose, warm clothing as protection from the cold, including gloves when handling cold objects. Loose clothing, warm clothing, protect from the cold. At all times, the patient should avoid temperature extremes. Avoid where something's too cold, right? Too hot as well, but especially too cold. Avoid temperature extremes. Immersing the hands in warm water, not hot, but warm water often decreases the vasospasms. And the reason they're saying warm and not hot is because we don't want to teach a patient to go burn themselves. They'll burn themselves and say, you made it happen. We said warm water, not hot. The patient should stop using all tobacco products. No, it said all. Notice it said all. It didn't say in moderation. It didn't say slow down. It said stop. Stop using all tobacco products and avoid caffeine and other drugs that have vasoconstrictive effects, such as cocaine, amphetamines, ergotamine, pseudoephedrine. All of these have vasoconstrictive effects, which makes the problem even worse. So you're going to teach patients to avoid it. Finally, provide patients with stress management strategies as appropriate. Why? Because um, stress also can cause vasoocclusive episodes. When the conservative management has been ineffective, drug therapy can be considered, and they go over um, calcium channel blockers like mifetipine. That's the first line treatment for Raynaud's when um, the conservative conservative management 
is not working. Prompt intervention is needed for patients with digital ulcerations and or critical ischemia. Why? Because the problem's gotten so bad that tissue is actually dying or tissue has actually died. And then the book goes over the uh, different uh, treatments. You guys can read that on your own. That includes surgery and debridement and all that good stuff. But guys, that is um, your Raynaud's in a nutshell. And again, you have to know the difference between Raynaud's and Berger. So please make sure you guys do a compare and contrast and you understand the difference and the teaching for them. Please, in the comment section, let me know what you guys thought about this video. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover next. And don't forget, the spots for my reviews are limited and they're filling up fast. So don't say I didn't warn you. Again, if you want to look into my review sessions, they are on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Also, you guys can catch me all, almost daily covering a variety of nursing topics on my TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook channels. Thank you so much for watching this video and you guys will catch me on the next video.